Have you ever updated your wallpaper and felt like you've got an entirely new phone? Well, if you take a little time to dig into your iPhone settings, you can truly give it a new lease of life. Today, I wanna to take you through my iPhone setup for 2022 and maybe give you some inspiration for how you can create a minimal iPhone setup of your very own. First things first, let's take a look at the home screen, which is very much inspired by two of my favorite creators, Kanupsi and Byte Review. They've worked together on this wallpaper pack of simple designs inspired by Japanese print art in a range of calming hues. Smartphone screens can be busy places, so I really appreciate having a toned down backdrop that allows me to open up my phone with a calm mind. Another brilliant way of reducing the noise on your home screen is by using an app called Clear Spaces. Now this is another Canoopsy recommendation and it's how I've cleared up so much room towards the top of the display. Clear Spaces allows you to create blank widgets that float anywhere on your home screen. Not only does this prevent you from having to swipe down or reach up to get to your favourite apps, it also means that if you prefer to have a photo of a loved one as your wallpaper, you'll finally be able to see their face without pesky icons obscuring it. If you want to take it a step further, you can add custom text as well as the time and date to your Clear Spaces widget. And by creating a smart stack, you can set other widgets to reveal upon swiping. I've got one audio widget for quick access to podcasts and Spotify, as well as a link to recent notes and Notion pages so I can quickly jot down an idea. One big change that I've made to my home screen this year is to arrange my folders by intent rather than category. The idea is to create a bit of a workflow that nudges me to be more intentional about the way I'm using my phone. Even in 2022, the primary use of a phone is still to communicate with other people but I've always found that messaging feels a little cold. That's why the closest folder to my thumb is called Connect. It contains a few key apps that encourage me to maintain and create connections with family, friends, and colleagues. Moving clockwise, I want to make sure that I don't just default to consumption mode when I pick up my phone. So there's a create folder that encourages me to work on some ideas for videos, check in on my YouTube channel's performance, or take an organized footage. Next up, it's time to share that content on all of the usual platforms. Of course, for longer videos like this, I do all of my editing on a computer, but simply by calling this folder share is a reminder that I'm not just there to watch YouTube videos all day. I actually want to create and contribute to the platform. If you're wondering what this Substack icon is, I recently created an intentional tech newsletter. It goes out every Friday at 8 a.m. and puts a mindful spin on three topical tech stories. It only takes five minutes to read and it's completely free, so go ahead and check it out with the link down in the description. When I am in the mood for more of a lean back experience, all my key news sources and podcasts are stored in the Engage folder. I'm a big Liverpool fan, so I probably spend most of my time listening to fan media shows by the Anfield Rap. The Verge is by far my favourite tech website, and I've got a really good deal on The Athletic for broader football journalism. But beyond that, I mainly read The Guardian for all of my news. I'm also fully on the Wordle bandwagon, so I've created a quick link to the website, again using an icon by Canoopsy. And no, this video isn't sponsored, I just really like his icons and the simple design. But if you haven't checked out Wordle yet, you should definitely give it a go. It's just a quick word game that will give you that will get your mind going at the start of every day. When it comes to my dashboard, the goal is to keep everything above the fold if possible. When I was living in London, I mainly used to use the Google Maps app to check travel times, which is amazing when you're you know, sitting at a bus stop wondering when the next one is gonna come. But since moving to Liverpool, I've never really had the need for an app like that. The main apps to have taken its place are a quick battery view, the weather app, and my Google Calendar. My job involves a lot of meetings, so it's really important that I can get a quick glance at where I'm expected next, especially when I am working from the office. Next up, I have a Siri suggestions widget that gives me some smart suggestions on which app that I might want to use. And below that, I have NordVPN, which I don't really use too much when I'm in the UK, but when we are staying with family in France, it's brilliant for being able to access UK TV, and that means I don't ever have to miss any Liverpool games. For everything else, I'm quite happy using the search to open up an app or a website that I visit less frequently. And I do have a hidden home screen for apps like finance and settings because I do all of my banking on my phone these days, but I don't particularly want to think about money all of the time. One app that is definitely worth checking out here is Shop by Shopify. It basically pulls in all of your tracking information from the various orders you've made online and puts them together in a really easy to navigate list. So you can always have a quick glance at where your package has got to. One of the big breakthroughs I had last year was to stop using my iPad like my iPhone. That might sound obvious, but if you do wanna see just how differently I've set up my iPad, then check out this video next. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in a bit.